Okay, so this, uh, this next session is um, a little shorter from what we had originally planned, but that's okay because I kind of covered some of this material this morning. So this is just going to go a little bit more into a little more detail about the, the various code tables that are present in the, in the format. And whether it's in GTSVP ASCII or the NetCDF file, that's the same code tables that are used. So, as I told you this morning, there's a we we decided to build a format that had a code table, a value, and then a parameter uh, a quality code for the variable certainly, and uh, and it was a way to make the file or the file format flexible to handle new um, variables that we hadn't imagined we would need when we built the file. So it, it allows it to be extended to new information, new variables, uh, everything. And a good, again, a, an example was when we first um, started collecting data, we didn't anticipate including the chief scientist's name, for example. But when we found some of the data coming to us had that, we just created a new code for the chief scientist's name, inserted into the surface codes part of the format. It's included in the file. So, first of all, all of the the units of GTSPP are required to be uh, SI units. So that's uh, meters and uh, uh, well, meters and degrees C, which is a derived SI unit. Uh, salinity is the uh, practical salinity scale. Um, the oxygen is in. I think it's grams per kilogram, I think is the CI, is SI units. So it's all in SI. So if data come to you in a different format, or to us in the, in the program, we run the appropriate conversion uh, formula to turn it into SI units. So that way, when the data are, are retrieved by a user, he no always knows they're going to get the data all in the same unit. So in the early days of the program, we were getting XPT data from the U.S. Navy in degrees Fahrenheit. So we had to do a conversion to degrees C, so it would uh, be included. Um, so this is, uh, what you see here is, is a, uh, a summary, if you will, of the various parts of the, um, of the, profile, of the station record. So that's the first header that, that accompanies the data. So there's the basic station information, which is come on, this stuff here. Then something, uh, part of it that tells you what profiles are included in the, in the subsequent records. The surface parameter group, which is where we would store the uh, real numbers as they came to us. The surface codes, where we store the um, character strings. And then the history group that records the processing um, of, the, of the data. And then finally, the uh, profile record itself. So within the, within the station record, there are these kinds of code tables used. So the cruise ID, in fact, is not so much a code table, but it makes use of a ship code, code table that's maintained by the ICES organization on behalf of IODE. And uh, it's a two-digit set of characters, two-digit characters um, that are used uh, in in ICES and IODE. Alternatively, it could also be the uh, call sign of the ship, and that's maintained by the uh, International Telecommunications Union. So it's another set of code tables. But again, we just reach across and use those code tables rather than inventing. The example you see here, in fact, where it has Q59 and so on, this is the Q59 tells us it's a, an Argo float. So that's the convention that WMO has uh, said that's how we will identify Argo floats on the, uh, on the GTS. Um, the data type, this is a two-character code. It tells you if it's a a real time, so BATHE, BA, or TE. In the example here, it's TE, but it could also be CT for a CTD, XB for an XBT, MB for an MBT, 
uh, BO for bottle, and so on. Uh, again, all of those codes are listed on that, uh, that site that uh, Charles showed you this morning. Uh, U flag, again, is the update flag, tells you what to do with the record on input to an archive, into a, uh, either a relational database or whatever the archiving system you use. And the example here is to use U, which means it's a new record and it updates into the, into the archive. But you can, you can assign other flags to that if you want. We use U, R, C, or U, R, D, and S, as I said. So update, uh, replace, delete, skip. Uh, source and type of the data and the stream ident, another code table. It's um, kind of a concatenation of where it came from and what kind of data. So METE is that said it came through the MEDS real-time stream. It's a TSAC message. Uh, in the, in the uh, uh, delayed mode case, it would be, I um, can't remember what it would be, but it would be different than that anyway. Again, it's in the, in the code table for stream ident. Um, data availability, again, a code that tells your system when you retrieve it, if you can publish those data to people, deliver it at, during a request, in which case the flag A means it's available to exchange, or if you want to put some restrictions on it, you can set that flag to be something different in the database, and then you know that when your retrieval software goes to pull those records, you know that it's only... Uh, available to a restricted audience. In the profile information part of the header record, so there's the profile type. So in this case, it's a four character code. It was derived from a very old system that was developed in the 70s, 1970s, where they made up a list of codes for the different kinds of variables. Uh, TEMP was used for temperature. Uh, they used U cell, P cell, and S cell. And U cell was mean you didn't know what the standard for the salinity was. Uh, S cell meant it was the old salinity scale, and P cell is a new practical salinity scale. So you can keep track of things that way. Um, deoxy for oxygen. There's a whole suite of these. Uh, that uh, again are present in the table. So whatever variables uh, you are present in your in your uh, uh, in your data file, and if there isn't one, then you can create one and use it. The point being that within the project, if we see something new that we haven't seen before, then we can create a code. It has to go into the code tables, and from there on, whatever entry that is has to stay in the code tables because there will be historical records that might carry that particular code and even if you stop using it you have to leave it in the code table mark it as being obsolete but don't remove it so that if people get the data they can see what that code means so the temperature and there's there's uh, tens of those tens of those uh, duplicate flag simply indicates whether there's a duplicate uh, or not. So if it says N, it means that's the, uh, the copy of the record you should give. If it says Y, it says it, that there, there's another record in the database that duplicates that one, and so don't send it out. The digitization code, it, in this case it's used, um, and it was mostly for the real-time, that says whether it was digitized at particular depths in the profile, or whether it was done through what's called an inflection point um, way of, of optimizing the depths you choose. Um, it's not used so much anymore because we have uh, data systems that can handle very high resolution uh, data now. But in the old days, it was a way to basically compress how much data you had to, uh, you had to carry. Uh, the standards of the observations, again, this is something like the resolution of the, uh, or the precision of the, um, of the measurement. So you'd, you'd see a code here, and it would represent 
you know, two decimal places for temperature or three decimal places for temperature. So for an XBT, for example, it's good to about one decimal, so a tenth of a degree. Whereas CTDs, very high quality CTDs, you can do to a thousandth of a degree. And so they would have different codes for the standard to which they can be measured. Surface parameter group, the code table there is this P code, and it's a whole suite of, of uh, codes that, again, found in the same uh, code table from which we drew the names of variables. Just made use of systems that we had already in place. And in this case, the example of is the bathymetric depth. Um, it could be wind. It could be a wind measurement. It could be um, uh, cloud cover. It could be uh, visibility. There are all these things you can put in there. And in a number of the old, old uh, code forms that were used for real time, in fact, there was a place to put humidity, air pressure, sea surface temperature if you measured through a bucket, uh, things like that. And so that was, um, you, could, you would find it in there. Uh, parameter is the value, and the QPARM is the quality flag. Surface codes, this is where the, um, the character uh, data was put in. So a good example is the QCP, QCF. We looked at that this morning. Um, and that's encoded in, in hexadecimal, which is why it's in this group. Um, and again, a, a, param uh, a quality flag attached to it. In some cases, a quality flag doesn't really make sense because it's not, there's no way to evaluate that as a... Um, a quality of the, the data. The quali quality flag is primarily to say this measurement makes sense or we're not sure of it. In the case of the Q QCP dollar, there's no quality assessment of that particular value. So the quality flag doesn't really make sense to be used here. But nevertheless, for the measurements that come in, you have a place to attach a quality flag. The history group it's uh, made up of these um, four parameter codes. So an identity code just says, who is the organization that created the record? Again, we have a small table, M-E-N-O-C-S, uh, uh, A-O, A-O means A-O-M-L in, in Miami, um, and so on. So again, just to record, who's responsible for having done whatever action took place? The Processing code, PRC code, uh, as I say, in Canada, we would use it to describe every piece of application software that the particular record went through. And this example here is uh, just a format conversion from the Bathy format into MEDS GTSVP. So we know it's gone through the conversion. Well, it wouldn't be in GTSVP if it hadn't, but nevertheless, uh, it's, it's recorded here. And the action code, uh, in this case, just says CR for create record. But if it were a, a change or something into, a, a say, a temperature value was recorded, came in as 1, but we can see that the decimal place is, was shifted by 1 point, and it really should be, say, 10, then we could do an action code that said change value, record the original value of 1 in, in this history in the... Where is it? In the action code would say change value, and the parameter would be uh, the original value. And then in the final, in the profile records, again, the cruise part, uh, the data type you've seen, the profile type you've seen. The only new one is this depth pressure code. So sometimes the data would come to us in depths, as from an XBT. And sometimes it comes as pressure values, typically from CTD stations. Some originators um, will give us CTD data with depth, where the pressure has been converted to depth before it comes to us. Some don't. And in fact, pressure is probably the more is the better variable to send when you're sending CTD data. Okay. Um, in the net CDF format files, you, you see these, these 
longer names, if you will, or the transcription of what the name looks like. So uh, PC Prof of all this kind of stuff. I should let you do this because this is more familiar to you. Yeah, I'll let you do this. So, as I said earlier, the GTPP initiative format is just a translation from Mendelsky to a different format, which is more easy accessible. So, when you read the GTPP uh, ASCII format, you will read from beginning to the end. So, the good part for an uh, initiative file. You don't have to read line by line. You don't. You, you only have to do is say, okay, listen. Uh, I know GTPP initiative structure. I'm only looking, looking for temperature. And the temperature will be 19 for them in that in the, uh, the case. So you don't have to read number one, two, three, and so forth. You don't go ahead and jump to 19 will be read temperature. So that's the, that's the reason why we go with GTPP uh, initiative format. We start to make a initiative format as easy stand, as easy understandable as possible. Okay, you just purely translate from Med ASCII, that will not make sense at all. I mean, that's helpful, but not too helpful. So we start to create another web or name, which is slightly different than the original GTPP code or something. So for example, we got GTPP temperature instrument code. Okay. It does, it does say uh, whatever the, in the metas key field. So, so right now we create another variable name called GTPP platform code. Instead of say plate, P-L-A-T, and, and people will get confused. What do you mean plate? Okay. So instead of saying plate, we say GTPP platform code. So when you open up the CDF file, you, you assign the NC bar equal to GTPP platform code. Now read and open and then return them back to you. Okay, so, so this is a bunch of the variable name showing on the left hand side. Oh, and there's a, the right hand side is tell you to find the definition for that code. Okay, so this is still a kind of weakness of this GTPP initiative because users still have to open the browser and to understand the meaning of the code, which is to me, it's, it's headache. We try to at least maintain a key uh, surface code in HDF and uh, more readable by all users. So, and so this is the, the uh, history group, so history and ident code and pro codes and so forth. So, and, and Bob already showed you earlier, this is the GTAPP code table. Okay, so I, I skipped that one. Uh, this is another call table. The best way to look at this, let, let me walk you through with the uh, call table. Yeah, this is the way I'm, I'm trying to tell you. How to look at, how to search for service code information. Okay, once you open up NCD file, you should be able to read. And later on, we will change, I will tell you how to read uh, GTAPB NCD file. In, in, in R. So, so let's walk through with you about the, look, the, on, on, the on the website. Okay, and you can do the same thing with me. Okay, this is, uh, this is just a GTAPP training website hosted by ILD. What I'd like to do is take you to the NODC website. Okay. This NLDC web, web page. And then you can go here. And that's it. Oh, yeah. It actually, the, the, another way to go the, here, which I really bit hesitate to show you because we have problems. There are the problems on the structure of the uh, image. But another way to look at that is called www.gtspp.org. And, and the, it will look ugly now. And that's a problem associated with the server set up at NODC site. Because this is the alias. There's not a physical location for this URL. But if you type www.gdp.org, and you are one step ahead of me, you will see this ugly web page, website. See, this is totally unacceptable. 
Okay, so this is nothing wrong at NODC website. This is just when French, if a male, they are kind enough to to subscribe to register www.gtapp.org for the GTAPP group. When they make an alias, it is incompatible with the structure we set up at NODC. So instead of saying GTAPP www.gtapp.org, you just type the same. The, the whole address www.nodc.org.gtspp That's perfect, okay. So the, the mission part is a NOVA logo, no, a NOVA logo, okay. And this is this is uh, nobody's fault. This is because we try to map the two different address into one lo central location, and that can be bit off. So it's easy to fix, and, and since I'm on travel right now, I cannot fix now. I cannot fix it from outside, so I have to fix it from my office. But just, just keep GTAPP, this is much easier for you to remember. Okay, so the, right now the only problem is the NOVA icon, and NODC with the image is kind of missing right now, but this is okay. So you go here, and this is all the information. This is all the all GTAPP web page, and including the meeting Report back to 1990. Everything we try to clean up this web page, okay, and maybe hopefully by the end of this uh, uh, calendar year, we can we have, we have a new 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 look. So looking for you, you still can come down here and looking for GTAPP code and so forth. All the information is is there. Okay, it's take okay, and this is updated on a daily basis. It's up to a daily, okay. Uh, you, you can look at the date, it's a 2024, which is, which is uh, to, today, right? Today, 2024. Yeah, okay. So, what I would really like to show you is a, is, is a GTA PP training, training material. The training with the training material at NODC. Okay, so we just said www.gtspp.org slash training. Okay, so eventually the layout for the training web page will replace the old GTAPP web page. This is a much user friendly. So, so you, you got, this is the navigation bar tell you, you know wh where you are, and this is the menu bar. So we are talking about the call table. So this is the call table. Okay, I can walk this with you very quick. This is the readme file tell you what this calls, and this I call the call web. The GTA PP on the web, so I said go web, no, like just for fun. And this is about GTA PP. No, Bob gave you an overview today, no, earlier. So the history, overview, objective, sitting group, and the tenor roof, and so forth. And it's all the document, you know, the database design, how we design database, and which now covered to, uh, during this training course, because it will be too much for everybody. And this is data stream. So all the information we will talk here so far. So let's look at the call table. The first line will take you to the latest the GTAPP code. Okay. And and the, the, the following will say, okay, GTP, you got some say, say data quality code. So you can click on that one. So you guys you see the code equals to zero, what does that really mean? We, we didn't cover yet. It's uh, hopefully we'll cover tomorrow. So GTPP using GTPP quality code from zero to nine, except six, seven, eight not used. It's still reserved. However, last week we decided to use number eight as the interpreted value. Okay, so so officially, you know, we were using zero. All the number except six and seven were reserved. Okay, so look at another another case, the data type. Okay, so so this is the two two byte to indicate data type. Say, as I remind you er earlier. I can ask you again. You will see data type equal to TE or BA. What does that mean? You will know if the data type equal to TE or BE, that are the real time. Real time data. Otherwise, all the data type are delay mode. So look at the TE at the near the end. Okay, this stands for T second message, which means the data coming from GTS. BA, basic, 
Okay, basic message, which is only for temperature. Which te again, those two data types refer to real stream, real data stream. The others are dilemma. Okay. So, so using this menu, menu bar, you can go anywhere. You know, you can jump to one to another. That's the good sign for this one. Sometimes people have difficulty to understand the parameter code, platform code. So we sort the platform code by three categories, by call sign, and by NODC code, or by platform name. Okay, so there's a three way to look, to look at definition of the platform code. There's a call sign that pick out as a, and it began with Q something. We knew that Q, you the call sign began with Q, that's the algo profiling float. Okay, so from here, you, you will see, okay, the call sign equal to, uh, this is not a, uh, uh, did I say, oh, okay, got to be, I might be clicked on different, different page. The call table, so the call sign, and the call sign Q part. Oh, okay, I think this is this is this is not right. It's already pointing to zero to nine. Should be should be pointing to there were profiling quotes in there. Just hmm? the first entries in the table were from uh, some word platform and it's only one that had a Q assigned. Yeah, okay. No. But but anyway, this is the way to look at the definition of the old GTPP code, the location, the find definition. Okay. So let me return to my PowerPoint presentation. Let me see where we are. Okay, so this is one area, but I would not suggest using this one because this one will be replaced later on. Okay, so. Okay, so let's try to run the. Uh, let me see. Let me, what, how many slides do we have? We only have two, three more slides. Okay. Let's try to to do some hands on exercise. Okay. This is exercise eight one. The, to interpret the Q GDPP code in R. So so we will write a, a R script to take GDPP code from the command line, and the and we use we use the R session number and what in work. Right? Okay, let's try to this way. Uh, I, I know what I'm trying to do. Okay, now let's quit this one. Okay, let's go back to my command line, which I prefer using. Uh, this one. Here we are. I lost my connection. Okay, let me make, make another connection again. SSH, this, X. This is asking you to use another R function called the command arcs. Okay. And this will be a little bit difficult for you to understand. So I will go ahead to show you how I did it. So this is the answer to the exercise eight. So I, I, I bring this up to the screen and explain line by line to you. So this is gonna be
Okay. Okay. So so the, the first nine is ArcGIS. Uh, maybe I use this one. This is bigger. Screen is bigger. Okay, can you read? Yeah, I don't know how to make how to make this bigger. No. Oh well, I mean, why don't you go into? Okay. But then you don't have that other screen on. Yeah, like that's so. fine. Okay, you step on. Oh, whatever. Okay. So I try to go back and forth. Okay. So, so let me explain this to you line by line. So, okay, you have some feeling about how the R work. The, the first line arcs. This is special R function. Okay, called the commands command arcs, which means reading something from your command line. Okay, you see R something, read something from command line. So, so that and it's the second line code code files, the name of the GDPP code. But right now it's in the end of the data directory, as you can tell, it in the directory, and the file name called gtpp underscore calls.tsv. And I will show you later on say how, how the text code looks like. The file was created just for this class only. But I intend to make this update this file, the gtpp underscore code.tsv no, on a on a daily basis. So you always get the, the latest the gtpp code. It's not changed very often, but occasionally we got new code and we update the table, and we should update this file. Okay, so so you should know the last line count, which means we assign this file to a variable name called uh, count C O N, and this is read line by line. Okay, as I we as you showed earlier, read line is read the file one by one, one line by one line, and all the way to the end of the file. So so this is uh, the stream. Split, str. Oh, sorry, not yet, not yet. <laughs> I know you got easy to go. <laughs> okay, this is a split stream. Str means stream and split because line, all the line are all the code in one line is separated by tab. You know, the backward tab means separated by tab. Okay, so this is counting how many lines in the file. Length line is, is read in, read in here, right? So this is counting how many lines in the file. So so this is assigned a variable called found. Right now it's it said false, it said not found. Okay, when it's found is it's a variable. With found equal to false, that's been not found. It is it tend to be true and then we found. So starting from this line, four, this is a loop, four loop, going the variable i. Going from one, the beginning, to the end of the line. This is number number nines. This is right here. It, it get the the value from the this this uh, this function called length, and they get total number nine here. So this a, a f loop. It's looking for all the lines for the file for for the for the variable equal to your input. It's coming from arc from here. So. If the if I find the record contain the argument which you, which the letter you enter which the GDP code, and that will say okay found is true. So at the very end, if found if I found something equal to what you were asking for, which is GDP code, and I will say okay, GDP code is this and that is found. So so right now I'm going to give you a real demo about this. Before we do that. Okay, this is the same as I showed you earlier. Okay, I like to make sure, or anybody think about the GDP code, but I like to make sure that I enter the one that already there. Okay, and that could be, uh, let me see, T T S P P. Some shit. Oh no, sorry. Okay, let's just say uh, you say QCP dollar sign, right? Okay, what's that really mean? QCP dollar sign, which one of the GDPP code. So what I like to do, I say R because I don't want to use an invoke R environment. I'm going to run using a 
run in a, a, a batch mode. So what, the only thing I have to do is say R script. Yeah, did you remember R script? And, and uh, followed by the program name, which should be, uh, let me see where it is. GTPP, GTSPP, let me see. Got to be eight. No, I, I, I need to go to one level up. Not, not in the data directory, it's, it's in the G train, G training directory. There, there's a file called GTSPP8 or something. Here we are. GTSPP8 is called EXR. So this is this code I show on the screen. So we're going to use this exercise 8 one and to find the definition of the GTPP code, which is QCP down. I know that we have find a code called QCP down. Actually, that's called the quality control performed by NODC. Okay, I believe, so. or QMP, I don't know, but anyway. So, so, so let's say R script. R script is the R command. It's a command to run R in the command line, at the command line, so R script and followed by gtspp ex8 8.1.r right? so, so I like to understand what the QCP data stands for. Right? So by looking before I press the enter key, so this is the command, the QCP will come in from this area. Okay? So once I hit enter, and this is a Okay, this is a R S C. Let me see. What about the T at the end of script? I P T. I mean, it's P T. Yeah. Okay. See that? No, I, the T was missing. It, it when I try to run the program. So I like to run this script from the command line. Any command line. So the only thing I have to do, I just say R script, R S C R I P T, okay, and then followed by the, uh, the, the, uh, the the file name which is G T S P P underscore E X number eight dash one dot R, and I'm try to read in the G T S P P code from a command line, and right now in this case it will be Q C P look like it's a, so I just type Q C P dollar sign. I try to understand what the QCP dollar sign means, what's the meaning for doing that. So that's the way I try to get the meaning for the QCP from this file, data slash gtpp codes.tsv. So this file was created, supposed to be on a daily basis, okay, but this one was created a week ago. So after you finish typing, you just press the enter key and it will read into we read that file and searching for GTAPP code equal to QCP data and then return the meaning of the QCP data, which it means is the QCP equal to QC tests performed by means. Okay, so let's took another way to look at the code, which is uh, GTSPP. Codes, TSV. Okay. So so I read in the GTP test code by using VI editor. I'm not I'm not going to edit this one, but I'm going to show you one 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 trick, how to search, search file, search some text in this file. So the way in VI you want to search something, you say put a slash. See that. Do you want to try that? It's a kind of quick and dirty work. Slash, and they say, okay, I'm gonna to try to search QCP down or QCF. Let's try a different way. QCF down sign. What's that really mean? Okay, now you say, I'm searching for QCF down sign. Okay, it's not there. Okay, so there's no such code. So, okay. so let's go try, try, try another one. QCP down No? Okay, that cover QCP. Here we are. Probably, uh, we are use a special meaning for dollar sign, so they are kind of not allowed. 
So, so I search for QCP, but you see that on the first column is GTPP code, and it's separated by tab. You see that you have moved the arrow cursor, and it can skip to the next column because the two columns uh, was separated by tab. So this is the first column showing you QCP data, and the next column is showing the definition for the QCP data, and the QCF is 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 about so QCF means the QC test failed, but performed by men. Okay, so 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 you can you can search in anything. Okay, uh, let let's try give another try. So PRT. Okay, so you you can uh, search for PRT. Oh, okay. Let's do do big word. Okay, so PRT stands for XBT prototype. Uh, it appeared in WML seventy seven zero. Okay, so this is the quick way you will have the GTPP code available. You don't have to use an uh, R, you know. You can you can just open that file and search it. Okay, so we know the QPRT data sign equal to uh, XBT prototype. So let's try to do the same thing, but this time we try to use uh, the, the R script. Okay, so so that just remind you to to search for GTPP code uh, using R. You say R script, and the file name right now is GTPP. Uh, GTPP ex8 one dot r. And we're talking about the uh, PRT down sign, right? Okay. So it is returned to you that no, that was the same thing because because the GTPP uh, ex r is looking for the same file. So so there are two ways. You know, the one is look through the uh, r. Another one is just to open the GTPP code file and you can search for. The, the, the code you, know, you are looking for. Okay, so we, we beat the clock by nine, nine minutes. Right now it's 16.51, like two, two minutes behind. So this is what I'd like to show to you today for GTPB code table, and then maybe a little bit uh, too much. Okay, it's, it's been a long day for today. So, any, any question? Charles, just to add something, you can open up Excel and import that TSV file into Excel. Exactly, well. yes. And it yes. knows, Excel knows that it's a tab delimited file, and it gives you the whole thing, but then you can use the search and whatever in Excel to, to find mm -hmm. your that, that also is a way. So there's a number of ways to get at yeah. finding what those codes mean. Yeah. Okay, so if there's no more question, maybe we, we can stop here.